All right, Jessica, we are live. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Uh, I'm sure you're very busy, furiously planning for WEF Tech, which, believe it or not, is not that far away. So we are very hopeful that this webinar will help you prepare for what may be a very different WEF Tech from the last time you participated in WEF Tech. So here to help you with those challenges uh, is Jefferson Davis with Competitive Edge. Um, and I am Jessica Dexter with the Water Environment Federation. Um, and Jefferson will help lead all of us through some uh, ideas and plans for how to tackle the top challenges facing exhibitors in 2022. Um, and this information uh, the, will be available online uh, with uh, additional resources that are in the exhibitor toolkit in the Exhibitor Success Resource Center. So in here you can find past webinar recordings, additional tools, the best information for planning and preparing for the upcoming event. So thank you all for joining us and Jefferson will uh, take us away. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Jessica. And really to everybody on the WEF team, you know, most of you exhibiting at this show, like me, have exhibited at a lot of shows and you probably feel like I do like the only time you typically hear from the show organizer is when they want to sell you something or they want to check or they send you you know that digital service kit with all those forms you got to fill out so how cool is it for all of us right to be partnered with a great organization like WEF and a great show team like the WEF tech team that really cares about you and the results you get from the show. And this Exhibitor Success Resource Center, this is your 24-7, 365 exhibiting knowledge portal. It's almost like a one-day MBA in exhibiting. There's downloadable tools, there's planning exercises, there's topical webinars, there's articles, and you have the ability at any time leading up on Showtime to click Ask the Expert, and fire away with your trade show questions. I have a team of 10 trade show experts on my team, and we're here to answer any questions you may have. So make sure you bookmark, make sure you share, the, and make sure you visit this often. So I don't wanna say a lot about me because many of you maybe have seen me around. I've been around the industry perhaps a lot longer than I care to admit, over 30 years. You know, one thing, you know, that I could say about myself, I'm very process oriented. You know, I believe in business. Most things can be boiled down to replicable, scalable processes, and I'm extremely results focused. As an exhibitor myself, I've been exhibiting for over 30 years, but I never had the big budget, right? I never had the $100,000, the quarter of a million, the million dollar budget to spend on shows. So I always was in a position where I had to make every dollar do the work of 10. So what we're going to talk about today, these ideas will apply to you whether you're a small exhibitor in a 10 by 10 or whether you're a large exhibitor in a 50 by 50, whether you market a physical product or whether you market services. So I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Uh, let today be really the beginning, right? And let's get after this. We have a lot to cover. But before I do... I want to learn two things about um, you, everyone that's on the webinar today. The, the first thing that I want to know is, when was the last time you exhibited, right? Um, have you exhibited a show already this year? Did you do one last year? For some of you, maybe you haven't been back in a show since things got shut down, right, in er early 2020. Fastest fingers click the radio dial button that applies, and let's find out who's with us today. I'll give you just a moment. Okay, we're at 72% of you have polled so far. If you haven't done so, look up, click, and go. All right, here we go. 70, there we go, we're over 80%. Thank you so much. Let me share the results. It's kind of interesting, 80% of you have been in a show recently. So I think this webinar for you is gonna give you a great chance to look at all these ideas and strategies I'm sharing and ask yourself, have I applied these at my shows this year? For those of you maybe who have been on the shelf since 2019, 
this is a great way to get you back into the game and get you ready to come in, hopefully even better than before. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. Now, since we're talking about challenges today, right? The topic of the webinar is, you know, how to address the top challenges. I'm gonna launch my second poll. And I wanna ask you, which of these challenges are you grappling with? Which of these have your attention? Which of these are you concerned about? You know, there's a trade show attendance has, you know, gone down a little bit. We're still kind of climbing out of the pandemic. Uh, man, we're in a time of inflation, right? Where everything costs more, travel, air, hotel, ground transportation, meals, hotels, shipping, labor, freight, everything is more expensive. Uh, maybe some of you still have some concerns about is it really safe to get out and uh, travel or gathering groups. And for those of you maybe who haven't been in a show since 2019, maybe you gotta shake off the rust, right? Maybe you're a little bit concerned, say, wow, I have not done a show now for three years. Fastest fingers, click the radio dial buttons that apply, I'll share the results. 77% of you have polled. There we go, over 80. You guys and gals are awesome. I appreciate you being willing to share with us today. So let me share the results. Here we go. Interestingly, the main, the main two, top of the list is concerned about rising costs. 70% of you are concerned about that. And 30% of you are concerned, hey, what if attendance is down? You know, can we still get what we want? Okay, so we're gonna hit those things really uh, fast and furiously. I'm gonna give you a lot of takeaway content here. So, so again, make sure that you have your um, workbook. And if you don't have a workbook, right, you can grab it right now on the handouts tab, one of five. Make sure you have it, or at least have a legal pad and a calculator. All right, so let's get rolling. We just did the two polls. So, you know, being somebody who really, lives in the trade show industry, right? Uh, I've, I've been around shows. Uh, I work in about every industry you can imagine, right? Um, so I really keep my ears to the ground for what is it that exhibitors are, are, are grappling with? What are they worried about? And it parallels the poll. You know, number one, which showed up with all of you, is how to control costs, right? Before I get into cost control, I also wanna get you focused on this idea. There's two levers to the trade show investment. Yes, we have to control costs, right? But on the other lever I want you to get focused on too is getting more value, getting better results, right? Getting more business, getting ROI. Sometimes we can go into this cost control mo mode so much that we're not focused on seizing the opportunity, seizing the moment, right? So controlling costs. Number two, is responding to reduced event attendance. You know, shows last year, as shows began to reopen in the mid part of 21, shows were off 50%. This year, I've been at a few shows that have experienced higher than pre-pandemic levels attendance. But, you know, attendance may be down a little, but, but here's the thing about attendance, right? The real question is not, Will there be 5,000, 10,000, or 20,000 attendees at WEFTEC? That's not the major question, right? The major question is, will there be enough of the right attendees for you? So we're going to get laser focused on that today, get you dialed in there. Okay, cost justification. There are many companies who lost customers and lost revenue during the uh, pandemic, and you know, they're really struggling. They're saying, hey, you know, it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of money to do this exhibit. So I gotta make sure that this is a safe and prudent investment, right? So we'll talk a little bit about that today and more pressure, maybe some of you, right? Maybe you've been on the shelf for a couple of years and you got a boss, an owner, a partner, a manager who's saying, hey, you know, uh, you know, we survived without exhibiting. And, you know, now that you're, getting back into the exhibiting game, I wanna see value. I wanna see where we're getting value and results. So maybe you're under more pressure to do that. So these are really some of the main challenges that I'm hearing, not just in you know, the WEF industry, but in the many, many industries that I'm really honored and privileged to be able to work in. So let's talk about money right out of the gate, top of the list. Okay, one of the first things I want you to do, if you have not done this, I want you to go to the WEF, Exhibitor Success and Resource Center. 
go on the, the site, you'll see it there. I want you to download the exhibit cost control tool. Uh, we have built a, an extremely robust spreadsheet. It, it's an Excel doc, completely customizable. It will not only allow you to carefully track your um, investment by the major areas. And by the way, if you look on the screen here, how the exhibit dollar is spent, these are the major areas where the dollar goes. Space, the exhibit, transportation, which is freight, shipping, drayage, show services, travel and entertainment, that would be your staff, your team, advertising and promoting, lead, gathering fulfillment and exhibit staff training. These are the major areas. So we built this spreadsheet for you to use, download for free, it's there, go grab it, right? Where you can plug in your budget, track your actual, track your above. And what's cool, when you use the sheet, uh, it will automatically create this pie chart for you. So you, this pie chart is included in the document and as a what? A benchmark, right? But when you put in your numbers, it'll automatically um, create your pie chart. Now you can look, right? And, and you can go, hey, how are we tracking relative to the average exhibitor, right? If Here's the thing when you do your comparative, right? If you're over in any of the areas or if you're under in any of the areas, it doesn't mean that you're wrong, right? But I think what it does mean is that you might want to take a look under the hood, right? And figure out, especially if you're far off of any of these numbers, right? So grab this tool and on the, there's five tabs on the bottom of this tool. There are money saving tips organized by major area. So our big takeaway, number one, let's get control, right? Keep, I read a book called The Richest Man in Babylon, right? And one of the key takeaways from that book, book was keep strict accounts. <laughs> Okay, know where it's coming from, know where it's going to, benchmark it, find ways to stretch your dollar and save money. So speaking of saving money, let's give you some quick hitters here. I don't think any of these are rocket science, but I think they're good to think about, right? Top of the list, number one, you know that online service kit? Spend time with the kit. Almost every headache, hassle, and cost overrun that exhibitors run into typically could have been prevented if you had spent more time with the kit. Now, Freeman's got some discount pricing deadlines and please put that on your calendar, September 7th. It, you know what, in fact, pad that date because that's right after Labor Day. I would uh, make sure by September 2nd at the drop dead that I have got all my orders in. You know, Don't wait till that last day because what happens if you know your internet's down or your power's down, right? So read the kit. I know it's not exciting reading, but it is mission critical reading, okay? Number two, when you're in the kit, look at all the different WefTech show vendors and look for those early bird discounts. Typically, these early bird discounts will save you on average about 30% on show services. So make sure that you are really looking at well, what are the early birds and let's get it in by then, right? For some of you, right, um, maybe it's time to look into a rental exhibit. These rental exhibits are so cool nowadays, you can sometimes can't even tell it's a rental. And what's cool about a rental exhibit is there's no freight, there's no drayage, there's no IND, installation and dismantle, and there's no storage. You show up, your exhibit's set up, ready to go. That's pretty cool, okay? So you may wanna take a peek into rental exhibits as an area. Uh, number four, think about this, right? Um, I always like to think about who is upstream from me in terms of what products or services that if a wastewater professional inquires into or buys makes me the next logical consideration. That's what we would call upstream complementary exhibitor. Downstream complementary exhibitor would be what product or service if they inquire into or buy make them you know you i mean make them next and so you can look at these exhibitors and rather than going into the show and feeling like it's a david and goliath thing it's it's me against the industry thing partner up 
You know, there's a lot of ways to partner with exhibitors, cross promotions, pulling your promotional budgets, sharing freight. There are so many cool things you can do. So don't try to go alone, right? It's easier to win as a team, right? Partner with complimentary exhibitors. Um, another area today is using things like flat panels and LED walls uh, instead of printed graphics. Um, this is um, a, really takes away from having to print and incur that additional expense, okay? So you may wanna peek into using flexible AV versus static or printed graphics. Now, I do wanna uh, backtrack for a moment here on point number one, right? Uh, drayage is, means material handling. I apologize, I think I might've been using like an industry jargon there that some of you know, maybe some of you don't. So Freeman really doesn't use the term drayage, it's called material handling. So uh, keep that in mind. You know, you probably wondered, what's he talking about, drayage? Some of you maybe been doing shows a long time, you, you, you knew that, okay? Uh, here's another one, right? Uh, freight and shipping uh, is much more expensive. I mean, diesel, the cost of diesel fuel, which is, drives most of this. So make sure you optimize your packages right? Really be thoughtful about, you know, fill the crate, fill the box, try to get as much as you can, optimize everything that you're shipping. Here's one too. This one is very interesting, okay? Uh, you know, over the years, I consult and train with companies and I, and I find that exhibitors go, man, these shows are so expensive. We're spending way too much money on the show. And when I go in and I audit their show expenses, I find that their staff, the people that they're sending, air, hotel, ground transportation, meals, if there's a, like additional badges and registration. Sometimes that's where the real cost is coming from. I've seen people in 10 by 10 booths that will send 12 people to a show. First of all, you can't fit 12 of your people in a 10 by 10. So here's the big idea on sending fewer people. This is what I would suggest you think about. Anybody from your company that's gonna attend WEFTEC should have a strong and valid business reason for being there. You know, it's not, oh, we're gonna go hang out, you know, and, and you know, party like it's 1999, right? <laughs> no, right? Uh, so if people don't need to be there, this is, you know, this is a great way to save money. Today with air, hotel, ground trans meals, so forth, you're talking probably $3,000, $3,500 per person that you send to the show. And, you know, and oftentimes, again, we'll go, wow, the shows are so expensive. It's not that the show is so expensive. It's that we're sending too many people. And make sure that those who do go really have a, a valid business purpose and reason for being there. Number eight, um, incentivize staff frugality, right? Uh, restaurant costs uh, are up, right? So, boy, it is easy to run that restaurant, uh, you know, and that restaurant tab right through the ceiling. So maybe consider going to a per diem instead of just uh, allowing people to use expense reports, okay? Consider sharing ground transportation. You know, hey, and by the way, uh, when you get to Chicago, you know, I'm sorry, we're not in Chicago this year. We're in New Orleans, but share ground transportation. You know, maybe try to get people where they arrive at the airport around the same time. They share an Uber or a taxi together right, uh, ground transportation, and audit all of your invoices. Bring all of your paperwork and all your forms to the show, and those things that when you're checking out at the end of the show, uh, make sure you audit those carefully. You know, track the order, track how it ended up, look for the difference, and if there's a discrepancy, be sure to ask about it. Now, those are not the only, right, but those are some pretty high level ones. So what I would like you to do right now, everybody on this webinar, if there's something you have done, a lot of you exhibited this year, if there is something beyond this that you have done to save money on your exhibit program, could you go to your question right now and type that in? I'd love to share that with the team here today. And for all of you, if you wanna even go a deeper dive on cost control, go to exhibitor online slash topics and enter cost control, and you will be able to access Exhibitor Magazine's library of articles on cost control. So let me see if anyone has shared a, a cost savings. Um, Inga, thank you so much. Uh, she says, we reuse our fabric graphic panels, so we're doing a lot of reuse of our graphics. That's a good one. 
If anybody else has a cost savings, go ahead and submit those. And on the back end, when I'm in q and I'll, I'll share those again. All right, that's the money part, right? So fire away with questions if you have any, fire away if you have any cost saving tips and we will move forward. All right, let's hit number two, right? Number two. So re remember I said that it really doesn't matter if Web, if WebTech has 5,000, 10,000, or 20,000 attendees, you know, winning the game of exhibiting really comes down to this statement. Please write this down. Attract enough of the right people. So we're going to work through that. Who are the right people? How much is enough? And what can you do between now and when you show up in New Orleans to be, write this phrase down, it's not in your workbook, to be in their mind on their agenda right so who are the right people right you want to have a mix customers prospects in the pipeline new opportunities you want to create a crystal clear what i call an ideal visitor profile what type of plants uh doing what functions and processes in what geographical areas what job functions and titles that almost like a persona of what your ideal visitor looks like. And then you've got to calculate how much is enough. I'm going to have you do that in a moment. We're going to run your exhibit interaction capacity and make sure you do this because I would argue that this might be the single most important number you need to understand about exhibiting. And then number three, what are you going to do, right, between now and when we arrive in New Orleans to make sure you're in the mind and on their agenda? Number one, I'm going to say this, make sure that you are using multiple media. I'm going to walk you through some DIY marketing opportunities and make sure that you're integrating the WefTech marketing program, specifically Feather, which is free. If you don't know about Feather, I really encourage you to uh, look it up and email client services at feather.co. And WefTech does something cool that hardly any other shows do you have access to the pre-registered attendee list. Jessica, are there any details about Feather or the pre-reg list, uh, maybe that I was a little too high level on that you might want to share? Um, I don't think so. I will add that for Feather, it does include a promo code that exhibitors can use. Um, and when they share their promo code, it gives their uh, prospects and their audience the ability to register as an exhibition only attendee for no charge. So that's a great way to um, get folks to come visit you on the show floor, um, setting up you know meetings in advance with them. Uh, for the pre-registered attendee list, that is downloadable at any time through your registration portal, which you can access by going to your exhibitor dashboard and then your checklist. Um, to register. So same place that you go to register your booth personnel, you can download that attendee list, um, which is the most updated source for you to get a list of the folks who are already registered for WebTech. Okay, uh, let's see. And you might have said it. I was looking at the question log here, Jessica. We do have a question. Uh, where do we access that list and when will it be available? Sure. Yeah. So the, uh, the pre-registered list you go through your exhibitor dashboard, your Map Your Show exhibitor dashboard, and on your dashboard, you'll go to your exhibitor checklist. And then on your checklist, you can either go through registration um, or lead retrieval. Both of those are serviced by our partner Merits. Um, and Merits also provides that list. So when you go through to your registration portal where you register your booth personnel, you'll see a button that says download list, download attendee list, and you will get it in Excel format. Excellent, thank you so much. And I'm gonna go ahead and send that answer out in um, writing to everybody on the webinar here. So thank, so thank you so much, Jessica, I appreciate that. Let's keep on rolling. So, hey, hey here we go, uh, let's get focused. Who are the right people, right? If you wanna get maximum value of, from trade shows, come in with a balanced approach work what I like to call the CPN triangle, right? The, on the base of the triangle is your customers. You gotta remember this, today, people are using trade shows to revalidate existing buying relationships. 
They're asking, are you still the best overall source, quality, price, service, value? You never, ever want to go into a key show like WefTech without reaching out and inviting your customers, whether you think they're coming or not. Some of you are saying, Jefferson, what are you, crazy? Um, I don't want to invite them, right? My competition is going to be there. Well, I tell you what, if your customers end up at WefTech from an invitation from a competitor and you did nothing to invite them, you have left the doors hanging wide open right, for a competitive entry. So, all, hey, another group of customers are your inactives, people that you have done business with before but haven't for years. Maybe you can reactivate the buying relationship. You know where the quick cash flow, like if you want to get, I'm talking checks in the bank within 60, 90, 180 days of show, prospects that are already in your sales pipeline. Get your sales team or your dealers or your distributors to build and submit a list of prospects, invite them to the show, use the energy of the show, use your technical experts, use your product demonstration to move them one step closer. And the third group is your new contacts. And that's where you come down to creating that profile of what types of plants, what job functions and titles, what geographical areas. You have this profile and you want to go after your new customers and make sure anyone who has reached out or inquired into your product services over the last 12 to 18 months, put them on the list, right? So let's go at it with a balanced approach. You will get maximum value. Okay, how many do you need to see, right? Isn't this a good question? Here's the thing, right? Trade shows are about face. If you really want to get down to the heart of the matter, right? It's about face and next. And that being said, you have a limited or a finite amount of capacity for face-to-face -face interaction. I'm going to show you how to run this right now. So grab your pen, grab a calculator. So WefTech exhibiting hours Open exhibiting hours are 25 hours. Now, we're not counting the golden hours in the morning and the entertaining hours in the evening. We're only talking about in your booth, 25 hours. So here's the question. How many people are you going to have standing in your booth on average over those 25 hours? Okay. Small booth, two. The staffing rule of thumb, by the way, is 50 square feet per staffer. Now, as you get in a bigger booth, right, there's a saturation point with this. You're going to have to back off your, your uh, equipment, your exhibit properties, uh, furnishings, storage, and only use open square footage. I want you to write down on your worksheet right now how many people are going to staff your booth. Okay. Now, listen very carefully to this one. I want you to set a target number of interactions per hour per staffer. The range, three conservative, four moderate, five maybe aggressive, but not necessarily, right? By interaction, I mean somebody from your company standing in your booth talking face-to-face -face with a water professional. That's what I mean by interaction, okay? So go ahead and write your number down. Now, when you multiply these numbers together, you have what I call your magic number. This is your magic number, right? You have the capacity for 200 face-to-face, one-to-one interactions in your booth. Now, some of you looked at that and go, I don't like that. That's not enough. Well, change the variables, right? Can you change the number of hours in the show? No, they're fixed. Could you add the golden hours and the entertaining hours? Yeah, but it gets a little complicated on how to do that. I want to keep it simple. Could you add more booth staff? Maybe. Do not overstaff your booth. It is one of the biggest mistakes that most exhibitors make. Too many people in your booth. Do not overstaff it. Can you change the number of interactions per hour per staffer? Oh, yeah. How? Good pre-show marketing. A well-designed booth that grabs attention. An interactive product or service demonstration in the booth, a proactive booth staff. Yes, you can get more than four, but if you've never used the formula before, I want you to start, you know, with this rule of thumb and then measure your results, okay? If you change any of these variables, 
the total number of interactions change. Now, winning the game before kickoff, right? We're getting ready to start football season here, right? Uh, and it'd be good to win some games before we even kick the ball off. How, how do you do that? If you can get in the mind and on the agenda of 200, in this example, 200 of the best and the right people, I'm telling you, you've won the game before the doors open, right? That's the hunt that we're on here, right? Okay, so let's keep rolling. So pre-marketing your participation. One of the biggest trends that we're seeing post-pandemic is that attendees are waiting closer to the event than ever before to register. I had a show in January that picked up 7,000 attendee registrations. This was a national show that picked up 7,000 attendee registrations within 10 days of the event. So people are registering closer to the event. They're sending fewer because travel costs are higher and everything else, but I'm telling you these people that are coming, right? They have a reason to be there. They're sending more important people and that's really good news for you, right? They're under pressure to justify their participation. Remember that too, just like you might be, they are too. They're more time pressure. You know, there's hundreds of exhibitors, there's educational sessions, there's networking events, there's fun stuff to do in New Orleans, right? And they're very selective about where they spend their time. They pre-plan their agenda. They know what sessions they're gonna go to. They know where their blocks of time in the exhibit hall are. They have a hit list of exhibitors that they wanna see and talk to. Please write this number down. Now, this is not a WEFTEC specific number. This is a North American B2B trade show average number. The average attendee during their time at a show will stop across the carpet line of 26 booths and half of those stops are pre-planned. I want, let this bake in for a moment because what I do not want you to do is rent space, show up, set up your booth, stand around and hope that the right people pass it and fall into it. I call that exhibiting by hope and hope is not a strategy, right? Okay, so if there's one area that you're gonna wanna increase your budget for this year, invest more in pre-marketing to do what? Win the game before kickoff, okay? So what are you gonna do to attract people, right? Value, write this phrase down, where the value is clear, the decision is easy. And the attendees are trying to figure out of all these booths and all this stuff, where should I focus my time and my attention to get the most value? Your tool is the value proposition, your ability to define and communicate a clear and compelling value prop. When they read it or they see it or they get it and go, this is important to me. I got to go to that booth. That's what we're talking about, right? So let me give you some questions here to prime the pump. Gather your product managers, gather your marketing team, gather your sales team, and come up with your best answers to these questions. Here you go, top of the list. What is the single biggest problem that your customers are facing right now that you can help them solve? Also, I would add that you are uniquely qualified to help them solve. Number two, what improvements can you make in their plant operations or processes? Where can you increase the throughput, reduce the downtime, right? Lower the energy costs, right? What can you improve, right? People are looking to do things better, faster, cheaper, safer, greener, cleaner, right? More productive. What is one useful thing that you could teach them that's gonna add value to their operations or their job or career. People come to trade shows to learn, right? You are the subject matter expert in what you do. If you will dangle learning as a key element of visiting your booth, people will come running to your booth. What will they gain? What will they save? What will they achieve? And what can they avoid by visiting your booth and interacting with your team? I am giving you a very strong assignment here to gather your team, and come up with your best answers to these four questions. Because when you find your voice, when you find your answers, you're gonna have so much content to integrate into your pre-show marketing, okay? So speaking of pre-show marketing, segment your lists, right? 
customers, prospects in pipeline, new opportunities, and make sure your messaging and your content is tailored for each list. Get started soon. You know, we're setting here on August 11th. We're a little under two months from showtime. Take these next seven, 10 days to really come up with your messaging, define your media, and then let's get this rolling. You know, let's get it rolling here before Labor Day. Let's get a touch point out. Over the time frame between now and showtime, try to land at least three direct touches. Three direct, you know, once is never enough, right? And it seems to work best when you do it through multiple marketing channels. Use email, use social media, use web landing pages. Use a media that hardly anybody's using anymore, direct mail, right? Design a really well-designed mailer. The clutter in the business mailbox is ridiculously light. You know where the clutter is? It's in the email box, right? Too many exhibitors go, well, we're just gonna email the heck out of everybody. Well, my philosophy is it's hard to win the race with a one-legged horse, right? That'd be a hard race to win, right? So I wanna put at least four legs on that horse, right? So, and finally, um, that reason, let them know what the visitor experience is gonna be in your booth. What are they gonna see? What are they gonna do? What are they gonna learn? And what are they gonna get by visiting your booth, right? So there's some really powerful content. High level here, there's a lot of drill down content on the Exhibitor Success Center, articles, webinars that go deeper dive. But these are the big rocks right now, setting out here looking with WefTech coming up here in early October. Let me give you another tip here that strangely enough, very few exhibitors seem to think about. Take a look at all of the educational sessions that are being offered to attendees on the show website. And ask yourself, which of these sessions relate to what we do? I wouldn't be shy about promoting those sessions, saying, hey, while you're at the show, go check out this session. And when it's over, come on over to our booth to continue the discussion, to continue the learning. And by the way, uh, Jessica, um, is it correct that as part of their exhibit package that exhibitors get conference registrations included as part of their package so in a way yes the booth personnel registrations that are included with their booth those registrations do have the ability to access technical sessions technical. Um, that includes the paid booth personnel registrations okay yeah so take a look then those technical sessions but also so you can learn you know like when i look at sessions at a show i ask myself a few questions number one which of these sessions are my prospective customers likely to be attending number two which of these sessions can i learn from that'll increase my understanding of the market and my customers right and go as a marketer primarily go as a student okay let me go number six because time is getting me away away from me here uh in all of your marketing outreach Make sure you have a clear call to action. Put booth 2484 on your My Show planner right now, uh, right? Uh, go to our landing page uh, to download this document and set up a time to meet with us, okay? Clear call to action. I'm amazed at how many emails go out with little or no call to actions. How many marketing has no call to action? If you wanna increase the response rate to your marketing, offer some form of a reward for responding maybe it's a contest hey drop by our booth participate in our five minute demo for a chance to win this or that and finally when you're going for higher level more important meetings um use calendaring right uh meaning by by calendaring i mean the appointment is on their calendar and it's on your calendar right and the mobile app and the my show planner probably has some calendaring tools in it. I would also encourage you to look at Calendly. This is a super cool, fast tool where each of your staff can set up windows to schedule and they can just send a link to people and it'll show when they're available. They click a button, both people are confirmed. Super powerful tool. So look into that. Okay, social media. This is just to give you a, you know, get, get, get your brain. Remember I said problem? You know, what's the problem they're having? Hey, communicate your problem. Unsafe working conditions affect workers' health and productivity. 
Maybe it's about brand positioning or brand repositioning. Maybe it's about sharing research. People come to shows to, to know where things are going, what are the latest trends are, what the breaking news, what the breaking research is. Have you done some research? Do you have access to research that you can share? Integrate this into your social media. Another underutilized asset that very few exhibitors seem to be using are event landing pages. The ability to quickly set up a landing page and drive your pre-marketing efforts to get people there. So if you take a look here, right? This is a great example. Look, Workday, connect with us at, hey, check out what their blue call to action tags are. Learn more, learn more, request a demo. Short and sweet, good branding, right? Look at this gray page over on the bottom right. See Workday in action, pre-schedule a demo. Get inspired, attend this session, add it to your calendar. Hey, we're gonna do a group demo, add it to your calendar, right? Clear call to actions, easy fast landing pages and these things are very cheap to set up there are companies out there like lead pages and others who are ridiculously cheap and you can set up a landing page in about 20 to 30 minutes okay all right i'm firing fast and furiously here i've got about what time are we looking at i've got about 15 minutes left in the session i want you to go to your question queue right now and think about any um, questions that may have flashed into your mind right? Uh, go ahead there now and uh, take a look and type those in. And I'm going to take those on the back end because I want to make sure we cover the rest of our content. All right. So let's keep rolling. All right. Let's, let's kind of hit both sides of the valve here. Let's hit cost justification and let's hit planning for return on investment. Okay. I already showed you the first part of the, of, of the formula, right? So what I want to show you now here is let me get on your exhibit interaction capacity what i want you to write down is what your total show budget is in my example i'm using twenty thousand dollars and by the way the budgeting rule of thumb for trade shows floor space cost what it costs to rent your booth times three to five i tend to lean toward the five because i want to have money to do the things that most exhibitors won't do now a, a quick and easy way, if you have a boss owner, partner, manager saying, hey, we're spending all this money on this show, what are we getting? Run cost per interaction. When I divide my 200 interactions into my $20,000 investment, my cost to put my company identity, my product services, my staff face-to-face -face with a water professional is $101. Take a look at the red footnote there. $1,114 is the average cost of a field sales call to put a body in front of a body out in the field. You're saving your company's money. You can easily cost justify the investment on CPI savings. Now, to get to your return on investment, you have to think about this from two ways. If you have a one-time sale, you sell them something, it's one and done, and you have to go find a new customer, then you want to use your average sale amount. If you have a repeat or an ongoing sale, you want to try to use your lifetime value of a customer. How many times does the average customer buy from you over how many years? And what is the average customer worth to your company? I'm going to use a number here like 5,000, just kind of pull this out of the air. So now I'm asking the question, how am I going to get a return on my WEF Tech exhibit? I'm talking cash in the bank uh, return. Well, I'm going to divide my average sale amount of 5,000 into my exhibiting investment. So I am gonna need four customers or four sales over time. That's a 2% conversion rate, right? I only need to convert two out of the 200 people I interact with. That is easy to do, right? Especially if you're doing all the stuff I'm telling you here. So what are the odds, right? If you put your products in front of this many, that over time you can generate that many. Right. So there you go. That's how you kind of think about cost justification ROI. OK, now I'm going to give you a few more tools. Some of you have very long, complex sales cycles. Some of you hand your leads off to dealer, distributors, independent reps, and you never really know what became of the lead. So here are five additional strategies to help you cost justify. The first one I showed you cost per exhibit interaction. That is a really powerful way to show your CFO, 
your CEO, your team, that you're delivering value for the company. Number two, track how many customers and or how many prospects you meet with during the show and come up with your cost per customer prospect meeting. Compare that to the cost of meeting outside of a trade show. What can you show here? So you're saving your company money and you're getting more meetings over three days than you're probably getting in three months. If you're doing this right. Next, cost per demonstration. So let's say in your booth, you have put together a really slick product demonstration. Maybe it is a small one-to-many presentation where you've got your equipment, you've got a presenter and you're gathering small groups, five, 10, whatever, right? So you're gonna to wanna to track over the course of a show how many people participated in your demo and you're gonna to wanna to pull out of your exhibit budget the physical cost to create and deliver that demo. Then you wanna compare that to what it would cost you to create that kind of an experience out in the field. Number four, this is a quick and easy one too, cost per lead. And by the way, write this down. I know I'm going fast, that's how I roll. <laughs> Word gusts at 260 words a minute. Uh, on average, according to the CEIR exhibitor ROI metric study, on average, one out of four booth visitors convert to lead. On average, two out of 10 leads convert to business. Those are benchmarks you can use. One out of four visitor convert to lead, two out of four leads, I'm sorry, two out of 10 leads convert to action or orders. But cost per lead, right? This is a really simple one to run. The other thing you wanna compare your cost per lead to is uh, other different media, but also your average sale amount. For example, if you had a $5,000 sale amount and your cost per lead were $4,000, you're in trouble, right? Why? 80% of the revenue is going to be devoured by lead acquisition cost. On the other hand, if you have a cost uh, sale amount of 5,000 and you have a um, lead of $500, you're looking pretty good, right? You're looking pretty good, 10%, right? And here, marketing managers, listen carefully to this one. This is the golden chalice of how you can look like a rock star literally within a week or two of show closing time. Improve your lead qualification and capture process. Get more information, more than just what's embedded in the badge, right? Uh, and then determine the number of quality leads you captured. For example, let's say that you captured 200 leads at the show in total. And let's say that only 20 of those, 10% of those were high quality leads, right? Now I know you can do a lot better than that. And let's say that your average sale amount is in my example, $5,000. So 20 times $5,000 is what? Let me multiply that. That looks like $100,000. So what you can show your boss shortly after the show is that we generated $100,000 of A-level potential revenue for our company. If you compare that to your investment in the show, you probably already have generated a return on investment. And it makes you the hero of the marketing manager because now you hand these leads to the sales team or the dealers or the distributors and the onus is on them to follow through. You did your job, you delivered. They gotta follow through. Okay, final point here and then we're gonna hit Q&A. Stephen Covey, the seven habits of highly effective people possibly in my life, one of the greatest books I've ever read. I've read it four different times in my life. Every time I read it, it adds something new. Stephen Covey, one of the habits, it's habit number two, begin with the end in mind. Define your outcomes, right? So I wanna go through a little process here to make sure that you have clearly defined outcomes and that you have a plan of action to achieve these outcomes. Okay. so. <clears throat> what are your company's goals for the remainder of 22 and 23 in the areas of marketing, sales, and customer relationship management? Talk to your marketing, talk to your sales management, talk to your CEO. What are your company's goals? Align your exhibiting program to support your company's goals. Then 
Now you're going to come up with reasons for exhibiting, right? And you look right now on the screen, this is from that CEIR report I mentioned to you, Exhibitor ROI Metrics and Practices. This shows you the primary reasons why companies exhibit and it ranks them in order of importance. Now, that doesn't mean that this is how they rank for you, but what this list gives you is a really nice checklist of potential outcomes that you could be planning for. So take a look, right? I would encourage you to have a minimum one marketing goal, one sales goal, and one customer relationship management goal for every show you do. If you do, you will never look back at a show and go, boy, that was a waste of time, right? But here's the thing, right? Reasons are not enough. The biggest mistake that exhibitors make is they have reasons. Hey, we want to uh, meet with our existing customers. That's a reason. What would that goal look like? We are going to meet with at least 80% of our active customers who attend WEFTEC with the goal of reinforcing the relationship and discovering an additional opportunity within the account. That's a goal. <laughs> leads, get some leads. Eh, too vague. How about this? By closing time, we will capture at least 50 qualified new sales opportunities. That's a goal. Reasons are not enough. You got to convert them to goals. Next, the major question. Here's the major question. Gather your team if you haven't done this already. When the doors close on WEFTEC, 90, 180 days after the show, how will you know you succeeded? If you'll reach out at these three time frames and define what success looks like for you and you work backwards, you reverse engineer the outcome through your written action plan. There's going to be metrics that you're going to use to measure progress, goals, and results. There's going to be data capture points before, during, and after the show so you can measure, and your written action plan, right? Don't just think it, ink it, right? Do you know that according to Exhibitor Magazine research that only 26% of exhibitors set clearly defined goals and outcomes and create written action plans. 76% of exhibitors are caught in what I call the reasons trap. Reasons are not enough, right? Goals, action plans, communicated, executed, and measured back to, and giving your team ownership for parts of these outcomes. That's how we win this game. All right, so um, I have covered a lot, and yet I feel like I've scratched the surface. I'm going to take a look in the question queue. And while I do, um, Jessica, um, Laura, uh, if there are any additional thoughts or comments from you know the WEFTEC team you want to share while I'm looking at these questions, uh, feel free to fire away. Thank you, Jefferson. Really appreciate all of the information that you've provided. I don't have any additional thoughts to add. Um, as Jefferson mentioned, there are a lot of resources available to you at your fingertips, um, as well as information that WEF provides through our um, updates, weekly updates that remind you of some of your dates and deadlines, which meeting those dates and deadlines is another great way to prepare for uh, WEF Tech. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me take a look. We've got several questions in the queue. Um, this one, Jessica, I believe would be in your wheelhouse. Um, Donna asks, so just to clarify, we cannot offer complimentary to our clients via a promotional code. So can they offer complimentary exhibit passes to their clients? Yes, that's what Feather is for. So Feather has that promo code. It's already embedded in the materials that Feather provides for you to use. Uh, so there's um, social media uh, graphics that you can download from Feather's, your, your dashboard on Feather, um, and you can promote for folks to use that promo code to register. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question from Sydney is, where can we find the Freeman Kit? Sure, so the Freeman Service Kit, you will access that through your exhibitor dashboard, your exhibitor checklist. The Freeman Kit is broken down into sections for you. 
If you want the entire Freeman service kit, I'm happy to provide it for you. However, I will caution you that it is 19,000 kilobyte size file, so it's rather massive. Uh, the best way for you to look at that information is through your Map Your Show dashboard, through your exhibitor checklist. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the next series of questions I feel like are in my wheelhouse, but keep them coming while we're together, uh, everybody on the line here. Someone says, can you recommend a metrics template to capture the data? Divide? Donna, if you look on the screen right now where it says download the free planning tool, that number three, the exhibiting and financial performance metrics tool, it's ready to go. It has four uh, performance metrics and five financial performance metrics built into it. So download that tool. It's free. Uh, you, you can customize it. Just plug in your numbers, and I think that tool is going to blow you away. So thank you so much. Uh, let me see. Uh, Robert's got a question. Uh, how many talks or demos should we offer at the booth? One per hour, more or less? And how long should they be? So Robert, I would start. Um, now, it depends on if this is a, a, a theater type presentation, right? Where you've got a presenter, and you, you've either got a crowd gatherer, and they're standing, or you've got seating. I would probably start with an AM one and a PM one, one in the AM, one in the PM, and I would try to pre-market that to get as much of that capacity spoken for before the show, so I know if I maybe need to ramp it up, okay? It's a product demo, which is good. Uh, with product demos, once you can get the demo filled, then you can increase the frequency of the demo. Like I might start out on day two with a product demo, Doing, doing two in the morning, two in the afternoon, and then I would gauge how much interaction we got with the demos. If we were getting more interaction, I would probably add demos. If we were getting less, I would uh, remove demos. And by the way, Robert, the entire experience, not more than 15, 20 minutes top end. Not more than that. So keep it short, keep it sweet. Uh, Emil just asked, will a re recording in this webinar be available? You betcha. We're recording it. It'll be up on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center on the screen. Uh, let me see. What else do we have in questions? Oh, uh, Andrea, great question. Since people are registering closer to the event start, do you recommend waiting a little longer than normal for pre-marketing? Okay, there's really, uh, uh, Andrea, there's two types of pre-marketing. There's what I call the one-to-many. You might be doing print advertising in uh, uh, trade journals. Start farther out with those. You typically want to start out in that three-month range uh, when you're using the one-to-many. For your one-to-one -one media, like uh, mail, email, social media, you want to start in about that 45-day window. And I will say this, the more important the visitor, the competition for their time is going to be intense. So get a little farther out. So I'll, so I'll typically do a three, three, two, one approach. In three months out, I'm using more of mass one-to-many media. In two months, I'm starting to drill it down. And then I'm really landing my best hits in like 45 days, 21 days, 15 days, and seven days before the event. So I hope that helps with that. Let's see. Uh, uh, Andrea, you've got another great question for me here. Thank you. When meeting with clients at conferences, what is the best ways to have salespeople interact with them? We typically don't send people familiar with the account. Um, I would suggest if you're using a CRM system like Salesforce or anything like that, I would, I would suggest having your CRM online and accessible in the booth. Uh, I would also try to lean toward trying to get as many pre-scheduled appointments as I could so we could do a little recon and come to the meeting a little more prepared. So those would be my two recommendations. Have your CRM available in the booth. Try to schedule versus just have these be random meetings uh, and have an, have an agenda for the meeting and have a clearly defined outcome for the meeting. Um, next question, uh, what do you think about a looping video demo? They're good, but don't make them too long, right? Uh, be, have captions, make sure you have captions on your video uh, and, and, and have a compelling title that they see, a benefit focused title. You know, people don't watch the, people don't go in a movie theater and watch a movie unless they know what the, 
title of the movie is, right? Uh, most people don't. So uh, when you have a, a looping video demo, keep it short, uh, keep it high contrast, uh, use captions, right? And, and make sure that it's quickly evident what is being shown on this screen, okay? Let's see, what else we got? I think that's it for the active questions. So we've run a few minutes behind. I wanna say thanks to, first of all, all of you exhibitors that showed up and showed out today with us. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. By the way, be sure to mark your calendar because on Thursday, August 25th, we are going to do countdown to WEF Tech success. I'm coming back and I'm gonna tell you exactly there, six, five, four, three, two, one, what you should be doing week by week to make sure that you are ready to win this game. And again, I wanna thank the incredible team at WEF, the show team that manages WEF Tech. They really care about you as exhibitors. They make a big investment in your knowledge and your success. Uh, so thanks to both of you. And my closing thought is this, it's not what you heard here that's gonna make the difference today. It's gonna to be what you do. So my challenge for each one of you is to find at least three specific ideas that you heard here today that you said, oh, that one, that one really got me there. My challenge to you is get on the Exhibitor Success and Resource Center, right? And get busy, get to work. It's not hard to win at trade shows if you're playing the game at the level we're talking about here, okay? I'm here for you. The WEFTEC team is here for you. You've got all these knowledge resources on the Exhibitor Success and Resource Center. Use them, reach out to us. Thank you so much for spending what I feel was like an hour of power here as we get ready for WEFTEC. Have a great rest of your day. I look forward to hearing from you, seeing you at the next webinar and seeing you at WEFTEC. I will be there. So thanks everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you everyone.